Good morning, everyone. There we go. My name is Laura John. I'm Blackfeet and Seneca, and am a native of Portland, born and raised here. I'm the city's tribal relations director, and I'm happy to be here to open today's press conference with a land acknowledgement. The city of Portland and the metro region are located on the traditional homelands of many people, including and not limited to the Monoma, Kaplanit, Clackamas, which are bands of the present-day Chinook tribe, the Malala and Tualatin Kalapuya, which are two of the current day 26 bands and tribes of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, bands and tribes of the current day Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs, Cowlitz, and many other indigenous nations who also made their home and seasonal camps along the Columbia, Willamette, Clackamas, and Sandy Rivers. Today, I acknowledge the people of these traditional territories that we live, work, and play on, and bring their existence to this place, and also into our hearts and minds today. It is because of settler colonialism that these tribes have been erased from our riverbanks by forced removal and other acts of erasure, including genocide. Hundreds and thousands of other tribal people from across our nation were brought to Portland for various federal programs and a continued effort at erasure and cultural genocide. My own grandfather was brought to Oregon to attend Chamala Indian School from the Browning Indian Reservation in northern Montana. Many of these families returned home to their people and their families, but many are still living here today. For so many of us, we are thriving and contributing positively to the city of Portland. And for many of our people, the lasting impacts and structures of colonialism continue to keep us erased. We are all too well familiar with the trauma and violence that stems from hate. Thank you for this opportunity to speak this truth into this space and for listening to this act of reconciliation and healing. Today's announcement of violence is an act of decolonization. I am excited that the city of Portland has invited me to give this statement today and to acknowledge the history and to take positive action. The city of Portland will become a better place because of it. I wanted us to all take just a moment of silence to acknowledge those that have been impacted by, by violence, who are suffering today, whether it's something that has happened recently or something that has happened in the past. We can just take a moment of silence, please. Today, I stand before you as a descendant of miracle survivors of genocide. I stand with all of my sisters and brothers here today, who are also, we are all descendants of miracle survivors of genocide at some point in our human history. Survivors of not only genocide, but also racism and oppression. Thank you, I welcome you to our tribal homelands. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming together and standing in the hot sun to deliver an important message. We stand here together, united as one, putting aside any differences we may have to set a clear and unified message. This is our city. This is our home. We're a city
city that seeks to find common ground. We're a city that's welcoming, inclusive, and supportive. We're proud to call ourselves a sanctuary city. We're a city that has each other's backs. These are our values. We stand in opposition to the rising national tide of hate, intolerance, bigotry, and white supremacy, especially against rhetoric aimed at women, people of color, and immigrants. We stand here today in Pioneer Square in the heart of our city, a place cherished by many Portlanders and visitors alike. It's a popular, open, and public space. Children come to run around and play with their parents. Couples come to take photographs and create memories. And Portlanders, by the hundreds and the thousands, come here to interact, to eat lunch, and generally enjoy the day. That's why this space is fondly known as Portland's living room. But on occasion, some people have come here with a very different agenda. They started using our square and the rest of our downtown as a place to spread their hate and intolerance, to spread their fear, and on occasion, to perpetrate acts of violence. Now, you know that Portland has a long and proud history of supporting the right to assembly and the right to free speech. It's ingrained in our DNA. It's part of Portland's soul. We've protested war. We've protested hate. We've protested racism. We've protested sexism. And we have long been at the forefront of activism in this community. But in the last years, as you're all aware, things have started to take a darker turn. People have been abusing that right using the guise of free speech to commit acts of violence. Violence is not a civil right. Right now, we're all witness to a national rhetoric that has whipped racialized violence into a frenzy, causing harm, causing pain, causing fear for many people here in our community. So hear me loud and clear to those of you who plan on using Portland on August 17th as a platform to spread your hate, you are not welcome here. Yeah. To those who promote violence during otherwise peaceful demonstrations, you are not welcome here. To those who perpetrate racism, sexism, bigotry, you are not welcome here. And to any white supremacists who are planning on coming to our community on August 17th, you are not welcome here. Together as one, we've asked everyone that you see gathered here with me today to come together and rally around our beautiful city. This is the largest coalition that this city has seen in years. We stand together as elected leaders, faith leaders, business leaders, civil rights leaders, school leaders, sports leaders, labor leaders, federal leaders, and many, many more. United as one, we declare this is our city. This is our home. We don't want your violence here. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce the first of my colleagues, Commissioner Amanda Fritz.
morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here in Portland's living room. Um, as I was thinking about what I was going to say today, I'm um, very mindful that I'm not going to be here on Saturday. I'm going to be at my second son's wedding in Chicago. And I was thinking about Rick Best, the former city employee, who um, will not be at his children's uh, weddings. Uh, I'm thinking about um, my husband, who will not be at his son's wedding. And all the other people who have been lost to senseless um, acts of violence, stupidity, uh, recklessness. I'm thinking of the memorial in El Paso tonight, and the people who lost their lives just doing their shopping, and just because of who they are. And so I, I, I think, I think of the solution, and I think of Micah, who stood up to people who were abusing the two young women on the mats, and whose names I'm not going to say for fear that they will be targeted. This is our living room, this is our place. We don't want violence here. We want people to love each other, regardless of what their uh, political persuasions are. We want them to be respectful of each other and to have their freedom of speech and freedom of assembly without messing things up for everybody else or for anyone else. So thank you all for being here to um, send this message as strongly as we can. It's now my honor to introduce my newest colleague, Commissioner Joanne Horsey. Thank you all for being here today. I want to be clear that I unequivocally support people who stand up against white supremacists, white nationalists, and people who are filled of hate and vile, and they are not welcome, they never have been, they never will be. <laughs> this is not a new issue in communities of color. I think that people are kind of freaking out because they're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? This has been the existence of communities of color ever since we landed in the United States of America. So this is not new. This has been a consistent message that we have right-wing radicals trying to create fear and distrust between other community members because they don't look like you. Well, guess what? We're not supposed to all look alike, think alike, act alike. But we can expect everyone to behave with dignity and respect for people who show up to stand firmly against white supremacy and white nationalism. The city of Portland in February of this year passed a resolution. It was a hard resolution for me to sign on to because I've been around the block long enough to know that resolutions come and they go. And then at the end of the day, what has changed? What has changed is we as a city council have drawn a line in the sand. We have been very clear about what we will and will not tolerate. We will not tolerate hate being screwed in the streets of the city of Portland. It is not acceptable today, tomorrow, or any other day. Let's be clear about that. That is not who we are. We are better than that. And I want to speak directly to the white supremacists who are listening and paying attention. This is not your city. You want to be hateful, stay home. Stay home. Do not get on a plane, get in the bus, get in the car, and come to Portland. We don't want you here. We've never wanted you here. And if we find you, we will expose you to the light of day. Have a good day. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Danielle Outlaw and I am your Chief of Police. Thank you. It is truly my pleasure to stand here with so many of our city leaders and partners today. This is the first time in my time here that I've seen such an amazing coalition of people. Please give them another round of applause. Thank you for coming forward and stepping up to say we will not tolerate any criminal violence in our city. 
everyone is here today because we are making a major shift of ownership to say this is not just a police issue, but this is a city issue, and I'd say this is a statewide issue. Police are only part of the solution. But this safety need, this public safety need, is citywide and statewide, and that is why we have joined together today. We all share the same collective pride in our city, and we are greatly concerned, greatly concerned, that its reputation is being tainted by individuals who have a violent agenda that we do not share. The members of the Portland Police Bureau have already put hundreds of hours of planning into our response to the demonstration scheduled for August 17th. We have met with local, state, and federal partners to create a plan to ensure that our community is kept safe. We have asked for resources from our partners, some of whom are here, Please raise your hands. I think I saw Port of, Port, a Port of, uh, Port of Portland, please. I see our, our sheriff here. Thank you, Sheriff Freeze. Chief Wallace, you were standing here. I don't know where you went. That's only to include a few. They've been nothing but helpful and gracious to assist us. They know how this affects all of us, and we have sat down and collaborated on how everyone can play a role to ensure everyone's public safety. We know we are well supported and we will have the resources we need to manage these events this weekend. Our bureaus do an amazing job. They are well trained and they are neutral. They are neutral. They focus on behaviors, not size. This isn't your show today. This is your show today. We will do everything we can to prevent crimes, especially violent crimes, from happening. In the event crimes are committed to despite our best efforts, we will do our absolute best to apprehend those who engage in criminal activity. This is a reminder that anyone with any information about individuals planning to commit criminal activity at any of the August 17th events or any other time is asked to share that information with us, the Portland Police Bureau. Information can be sent via email to crimetips at portlandoregon.gov. Crimetips at portlandoregon.gov. Thank you again for being here today, and I want to reassure our community again that we have their best interests at heart and that we are looking forward to working together to ensure that our city is safe for all. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome our U.S. Attorney, Mr. Billy Williams. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Wheeler and the other community leaders uh, who are represented in today's events. Uh, it's an honor to be here uh, with them and with all of you. And we're here to reclaim our city and demand stability in the exercise of democracy. It's that simple. Portlanders have a rich history. Uh, everyone uh, who has spoken so far has addressed that. We know it to be true. Covering uh, many peaceful demonstrations on a variety of issues. This tradition has been hijacked. It's been hijacked by a few. And it's extremists from across the political spectrum who come not to demonstrate, but to engage in criminal acts of violence and property damage. The actions of a few, to include mass cowards and marauding thugs, have tarnished the reputation of Portland. A few. The fact of the matter is, most people who uh, choose to come and demonstrate on the issues that are important to them are law-abiding citizens and exercising their First Amendment rights. Civil discourse needs to be civil. It's that simple. People should feel free to express their views without fearing injury. The First Amendment is critical in our collective values of engagement and together as a community, we need to call out violent perpetrators on the right and left and stand up for civility. I want to thank Mayor Wheeler and Chief Outlaw in particular for their support of law enforcement in this city. As uh, Chief Outlaw noted a moment ago, we've worked 
together with local, state, and our federal partners to develop a plan for how to ensure Portlander's safety this coming weekend. I want to compliment and thank the women and men of the Portland Police Bureau who have a, one overarching mission, to keep our community safe. Yes. They do a tremendous and often thankless job of this many jobs. Yes. So thank you. join Chief Ella today in, in calling out to you all in the, in the city of Portland with, with anyone with information on potential acts of violence. Do as the chief requested. Help law enforcement prevent acts from coming. And I want to tell you, the United States Department of Justice will not tolerate political violence. We are working together with our state, local, and federal partners to ensure those who engage in it are held accountable. Those who come to Portland with the intent to commit violent acts are not welcome here. I join in the demand not to come. Don't come. Stay home. If you commit a crime, you will be investigated and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Whatever message you're trying to send behind uh, your idle threats and, and your cowardly act is lost in the violence of your criminal actions, so stay home, don't come, and we'll all be better for it. Thank you. And I want to introduce former State Senator Ava Horton. Thank you, Billy. And I want to ask Pastor Mondane, president of the NAACP, to please stand with me. I want to ask Marcus Mundy, Coalition of Communities of Color, to please stand with me. I want Dr. Holt. I want Dr. Holt. He's doing amazing work around housing in Northeast to come stand with me, and I want my son, I want my son, Tyrone Waters, to come and stand with me. This is a God-blessed day. Let me say that again. This is a God-blessed day. My name is Abel Gordley. I'm a Portland native of 72 years. And I love, I love my evolving city. I'm proud to be here. We are here in the spirit of unity and of building beloved community. We are not in denial of the white supremacist or origins of the state of Oregon. We are here to use our words to help our community resist fascism strategically and intelligently. And we're here to prepare for the healing days ahead. We come, we come as peacemakers and peacekeepers. We come as bridge builders and to let the nation and the world know that we Portlanders stand together for peace, love, fairness, justice, harmony, and reconciliation. Words, words and intent matter. We support the leadership of our mayor, Ted Wheeler. We support the leadership of our Chief of Police, Danielle Outlaw. We support our police officers and absolutely reject the false narrative that the Portland Police Bureau has chosen the side of white supremacists. That is a lie. We need, we are here, because our children need to see us 
in this act of standing together and building beloved community. Our children need to see us acting to protect them in a time of traumatizing fear in this nation. We stand against all evil behavior, words and deeds that tear down people and destroy civility. We reject the puppet administration of hate and chaos in Washington, D.C. And the plague, and the plague of fear unleashed upon the land. I wanted to be here, and I say this to our mayor specifically, and our police chief. I wanted to be here to share some history. Some history from social justice organizing in the past. I'm thinking about the times in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s when an organization, the Black United Front, the Portland chapter of the National Black United Front, and Portland is organized for Southern African freedom. Some of you remember, some of you remember that time, those times of marching against racist violence, marching against police brutality, marching against apartheid and for a free South Africa. The marches for equality, non-racist education in Portland public schools, you remember. We, members of the Black United Front, we planned those marches and demonstrations with an emphasis on keeping everybody safe, everybody. And in the most painful of unjust circumstances, police killings, we intelligently exercised our right to free speech and assembly. We sat down and planned safe marches and demonstrations. We had permits. We had police escorts in all of our demonstrations. Not to have done it that way would have been irresponsible. Not to have done it that way would have been unsafe. Hear me. Getting a permit was not about getting permission. We knew our rights. We know our rights. It's about acting with integrity and being responsible. Our part, owning our part, owning our part in public safety. That's what we did. We owned our part in, safety, in public safety as we did our work around social justice. And we did the work in partnership with the police because we were intentional about developing and building relationships. And so I come to you today with a plea. Let us be more kind in our day-to-day -day dealings with one another. All we have on this planet, all we have on this planet, while we have the planet, is one another. So let us be the city of peace, the city of kindness, and yes, the city of roses. Let us be the beloved community that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. taught us to envision and to embrace. God bless our beloved community. Thank you. We must always give the queen the time she needs. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am State Representative Janelle Bynum, and I proudly represent East Portland and North Clackamas in the Oregon State Legislature. 
I am the proud mother of four beautiful children, Christine, Ellis, Caroline, and Asa, and I'm here because I'm fighting for them. Here in Portland, we are an open and think free-thinking city, a city of innovators, artists, activists, and entrepreneurs. We're hardworking people making ends meet for our families, and we're people pushing our community to do better. When we are at our best, ours is a city that doesn't just tolerate difference, it welcomes and celebrates it. But we cannot be tolerant in the face of hatred, racism, white supremacy, I'm calling them all, and we will not welcome violence. As many of you know, and some are not ready to admit, but we are a city that is a work in progress, and Lord knows there is more work to be done. We have enough to work on here at home, building an equitable community, increasing transparency and accountability, and rebuilding trust in law enforcement. We have our hands full without the added burden of senseless violence and chaos from people coming here to make a scene and sow fear. We don't need that. This is our city. This is our home. I am not stuttering. If you are planning to come here and commit violence or spread hate in Portland, we don't want it. You're not welcome here. Thank you. Next up is Commissioner Sushila Jayapal. Good morning, everybody. I am Sushila Jayapal, your Multnomah County Commissioner from District 2, proudly representing North and Northeast Portland. I come with the same two messages you've heard from all of my colleagues and everybody gathered here behind us. First, to those considering coming to Portland and Multnomah County to incite or inflict violence, you are not welcome here. Racism is not welcome here. White supremacy is not welcome here. Violence is most definitely not welcome here. Those are not the values of Portland and Multnomah County. The second message to my fellow residents of Portland and Multnomah County, this weekend let's demonstrate that racism, white supremacy, and violence are not welcome here by acting on our values. Our values of friendship, love, and connection. Several weeks ago, I had the chance to join the Walk for Immigrants and Refugees, an event organized by Portland's Parks and Recreation that brought together people of all races, ages, and ethnicities to walk together, eat together, dance together, and support each other. That walk showcased the best of who Portland is, who Multnomah County is. A community that aspires to create connection, a community that seeks to bridge, not to divide. We have a lot of work to do on those issues, but that's the those are the values we aspire to. So let's each commit to doing something this weekend that shows who our community is. Let's each commit to doing something that bridges difference and distance, and that creates connection. Find an activity in a neighborhood or with a community that you don't know. If you live in Southwest Portland, come to my district, District 2, North and Northeast. If you live in Northeast Portland, explore East Multnomah County. Do something that expresses our Portland and Multnomah County values of friendship, curiosity, love, and connection. By doing that, you will be showing that hatred is not welcome here, racism is not welcome here, violence is not welcome here. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Metro Council Chair Lynn Peterson. Lynn Peterson, Metro Council. I stand here with our colleagues uh, who have joined me from the Metro Council to stand up against the ideology of hate and violence 
We must be opposed to that in the entirety of the Portland metro region, not just in Portland. It's time for anti-American white nationalists to stop marching in our city, in our living room, in our backyard. Metro stands with those opposed to racism. In Portland, in Hillsborough, in Oregon City, in Lake Oswego, in Wilsonville, in the entire region, we must stand against racism, we must stand against white nationalism, and we must stand against this violence. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. My dear sisters and brothers, elected officials, it's really a blessing to be here together. But we immigrants and refugees, we stand every day in this bigotry and hate. We stand against this bigotry and hate because our faith teaches us that. The Quran teaches us that he made us God the Almighty into nations and tribes to get to know each other. The story of Islam has been getting to know each other. When a great Jewish historian, David Wasserstein from Vanderbilt University says that if it wasn't Islam, Judaism wouldn't have survived Christian Europe. We as Muslims, we as Jewish, we as Hindus and Buddhists, on all people of goodwill, we have to stand together because we need to get to know each other. By knowing each other, we'll bust barriers of hate and bigotry within ourselves. Yes, we are fighting those bigots that are planning bigotry every day. But there are bigots and hateful and hypocrites among ourselves. Today, we need to integrate by design the mayor, the commissioners, the state's leadership, the federal agents, and everybody need to integrate by design love and respect and multiracial and multi-ethnic in their offices. My dear sisters and brothers, let us change ourselves. Let us look within each one of us today that those of us that are here and those that are sitting on the other side, we need to know each other. We need to fight bigotry inside ourselves Today, our students in public school are not achieving. Minority students are not achieving. The question is to the superintendents, what are you doing in your job? To the board of directors, what are you doing in your job? Today, my dear sisters and brothers, we need to think and think that each one of us are the seeds of change. Let's not point fingers towards others. Let's look at the fingers the three fingers that pointing towards me. I can point a finger towards my brother, A.D. Mondenay, but there are three fingers are pointing towards me. I need to change within myself so I can be the example, the role model to do that. We stand against Islamophobia. We stand against bigotry and hate. Muslims today is suffering in our United States. Muslims are suffering in Europe. Two days ago at the high holiday, of Hajj season. A man from Pakistan, American, Pakistani European from Norway, he stopped the bigot inside the mosque that almost committing a suicide against Muslims worshippers in the early morning prayers. My dear sisters and brothers, let us change ourselves. Each one of us today, those that, of us that are here, let's look inside ourselves and say, am I a bigot? Am I a hateful person? Am I, am I, am I? Let us claim our humanity. Let us claim our love and respect one another. Today, my dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate so many nonprofits that are present here and leaders that are working towards healing and unifying. Let us claim our beloved community. Thank you very much. Let me introduce my dear brother, a great mentor, Eric Ward from the Western States. You're all beautiful behind me. 
I want to thank the mayor and speak to the city, to faith, business, and community leaders gathered here for the opportunity to speak. My name is Eric Ward, and I'm executive director of Western State Center. And as a person of color who has spent 30 years helping communities stand up to bullies, I know full well the danger posed by far-right paramilitary groups. They are a threat not just to vulnerable communities here in Portland, but to our very democratic institutions and form of government in the United States. But I want to say, there is a right way and a wrong way to tackle threats. We won't keep Portland safe with false equivalencies about violence on all sides. False equivalencies did not protect Ricky Best or Towson on the Portland Metro. I think of these lives and the dozens of other lives murdered by white nationalists over the last three years. Bodies spread in Portland, Oregon, in Poway, California, in El Paso, Texas. I think of New Zealand, and I think of bodies that are dead in the Midwest at the hands of white nationalists. And I say we won't keep Portland safe by eroding freedom of speech and assembly. This is a message not just to bullies, but to all Portlanders. Let's be clear, today is not about a crackdown, but a rise up. I am not here to blame city leaders or law enforcement. I am here to hold a mirror to the face of Portland, Oregon. It is time for us to stand up and support our leadership. We are facing a political crisis and it is ineffective and unwise to place the entire burden on city leadership and law enforcement to find a solution. There is no place for violence and intimidation in the streets. But we'll only keep Portland truly safe when our city leaders are able to stand next to community, business, and religious leaders. Using the power of their office, but using our moral power to denounce bigotry and violence. Let's be clear today, we will only truly be safe when good speech drowns out bad. So I stand here today to thank our city leaders for what they've done and to call on them to do far more. When I was a young kid, poor, without much to do before school started. We used to play a game called If I Were. And If I Were went like this. If I found myself in a lion's cage and the lion came in, here's what I would do. And as kids, we would argue about what we would or wouldn't do. Inevitably, a question would come up. If I were in the midst of the civil rights movement of the 1960s, here's what I would do. Now, we were kids. We didn't understand the choiceless choices of our elders and the society that they lived in. I've always wondered, what would I have really done in the midst of the civil rights movement? You may have wondered as well. But I'm here to tell you now, Portland, we no longer have to wonder. The truth is, whatever it is we would have done in the midst of the 1960s civil rights movement will be whatever it is we do when we walk away from this square today. Make it count, Portland. This is your city too.
Good morning. My name is Casey Chama. I am the executive director of Unite Oregon. I am here today to say a clear, send a clear message that white supremacists, those who are spouting hate and violence, are not welcome in our city. I came to this city, beautiful city, 20 years ago, seeking for refuge. When I left in my home country, I left because I want to leave a place where people can express their viewpoints peacefully. So I cherish that in this country for our freedom of speech. But in this country now today, we're at a crossroads. And we have to speak the truth and lay out what the problem is and share the issue itself. I am mid-40s, former refugee, and today I wanna, don't want to mess with words. I want to speak from my heart. Let me speak first to our law enforcement community. Our community, our city of Portlanders, are frustrated and they want a resolution and want, they want an action. This is not a play, but this is an ask from our law enforcement agencies. There is no neutral ground. We have to point out that the problem is white supremacy. That is the problem we're dealing with. And let me tell you this. As much as I disagree with their tactics, some of us are equating Antifa on white supremacists, proud boys, three percenturies, and other militia movement. Again, as I said, I do not agree in Tifa's tactics. But we have to say this. They are not equal to Proud Boys and 3 percenters. These are well-trained armed militia. And we have to deal with it. Let me ask, send him, ask our leaders, city commissioners and mayor. This country, this community, want a moral clarity. When we don't have a moral clarity, we cannot address the problem. We ask you to be have a moral clarity by acknowledging the problem we are dealing with is white supremacy and well-armed militia. Finally, let me speak to Borlanders today. The only way to defeat hate and bigotry is to love one another, to show compassion, to stand up with each other, to tell white supremacists that you are not welcome in our city. Saturday, the 17th, August 17th, if you are planning to come to protest against white supremacy, bring a picture, somebody who inspires you to be a non-violent activist. Finally, our city needs to be an incubator of love, compassion, creativity, not white supremacy and racism and bigotry. Thank you very much. Let me introduce the next speaker, Rabbi Deborah Colony from Portland United Against the Hate. It's my honor today to represent PUA, a coalition of 30 community organizations 
We're living in a time when violent fascists are emboldened by our federal administration to spew hate and use weapons to kill, maim, and threaten immigrants, black, brown, Asian, native, Jewish, Muslim, LGBTQI plus people, and people with disabilities. We must not forget that fascist rallies like the ones scheduled for August 17th are interconnected with recent domestic terrorist attacks committed by white men on communities of color and religious minorities. These fascist white nationalists have sponsored monthly hate rallies in Portland during the summer since 2017 under the guise of exercising their free speech and assembly rights they gather while openly carrying weapons and announcing on social media their intention to physically harm all who disagree with them. People may have the right to free speech, but the incitement of violence, especially with the history of making good on violent threats, is not protected. Creating false equivalencies between violent white nationalists and those willing to defend our city against their violence is unacceptable. <laughs> Pandering to a national climate that accuses Portland of being soft on Antifa is unacceptable. There is no equivalence between racist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, homophobic violence and those who say no to it. Antifa must not be scapegoated. We are, in truth, a city that is anti-fascist. When Mayor Ted Wheeler said last week that the crisis is not about ideology, I want to respectfully respond that that language does not move us closer to safety or justice because in fact, violent, hateful, fascist ideology is the problem. A military level response from the police that puts all of our residents at risk is not the answer. We are heartened by the call to create a community coalition to address violent hate at its source because countless strategies are needed to be deployed to move upstream and find solutions and not rely on state-sponsored police repression. PUA calls on the city, the region, and the state to find those solutions, acknowledge the root cause of the problem is fascism and white nationalism. Speeches and resolutions that are short-lived will not be the answer. We need concrete, long-term strategic solutions that uproot the cause of hate. We want to see policies with long-term financial investments in dismantling the machinery of hate and white supremacy. In order to end systemic hate, we need systemic interventions. At PUA, we say, hate is not welcome in Portland. White nationalism is not welcome in Portland. Period. I am honored to welcome Felisa Higgins from SEIU Local 49 to speak with you. My name is Felisa Higgins. I'm the political director at SEIU Local 49. Thank you. And I, I'm actually here today uh, with our 15% of Oregonians who are a family united in labor solidarity. So thank you so much for being behind me today and being against racism, hate, and fascism. Workers who come together, whether white, black, Brown are united in solidarity to improve their lives and working conditions 
and the lives and working conditions of every Oregonian. And that means standing together united against hate, whether grown in Oregon or from afar. We will not tolerate fascism and racism in our city. I want to I want to thank the workers who are immigrant workers who are in our communities every day working hard, taking a risk standing up and going to work every day with their children in our communities. And we've seen recently in Mississippi the actions that have happened targeting these workers in these communities. If we believe these actions are separate than the actions in El Paso, we are fooling ourselves. And I want to thank our mayor and city leadership for standing up and our state, our governor, Kate Brown, for standing up against fascism and rape and making Oregon a sanctuary state. That should send a clear message to everyone is welcome here. They're welcome in our unions, in our families, and in our city. Thank you. say good morning everybody it's great to be here and I want to say first and foremost thank you Mr. Mayor for bringing us all together this is what leadership looks like when you called everybody here answered and we're all here to say one simple message we're here to say no to hate we're here to say no to racism we're here to say no to shenanigans we don't want it in our community the business community doesn't want it and we're sick of it bottom line I'm proud to be here with the Portland Business Alliance, downtown Portland Clean and Safe, our members, our board, colleagues in the business community, but this isn't a business issue. It's not a union issue. It's not nonprofit. It's not public. It's not government. It's all of our issues, and this is ridiculous. If you have hate in your heart, if you come here to cause violence, we don't want you. Go back home. It's not necessary. Remember the consequences when you do this. People can't get to work. They can't get to their jobs. They can't put food on the table of their families. And we don't need that here. Portland welcomes everybody. And that's why we are here to stand with one voice today and say, we are a peaceful city, we are a peaceful community, and we welcome everybody here. So thank you on behalf of the business community to everybody that stood up today to say no to hate. And my guy, Timber Joey, is going to take it home for us. So give him a warm round of applause. Wow. To follow that, I'm going to be very brief because it's hot and you're wearing black. And... But good morning, everyone. My name is Timber Joey Weber, and I'm here today representing the Portland Timbers and Portland Thorns. Today, I want to take a very quick moment to talk a little bit about Portland. I'm a lifelong Oregonian, and this is my city. This is your city. This is our city. A community that we all love so much and call our home. And this is our peaceful home. A community that has no place for violence or hate. Today, I urge residents and visitors alike to join us in spreading the love of our collective community. I love you all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mayor Wheeler. So in closing, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, it is a little hot, so rather than taking Q&A from the press here, we're going to hang out afterwards. And if the press would like to meet with us individually, we'll be happy to do that. We have a very special guest who's going to close this out today. Storm Large is going to lead us in the national anthem. I usually sing this for, uh, for sports teams, for Blazers, I'm a believer, Timbers, Thorns, even Winterhawks. It's a tough song, couple of octaves, 
And if you screw up the words, you're dead. <laughs> so please help me sing because we gotta all, all of us, all of us, I see you, I see you, I see you guys, man. We are all together, this is our city. We all are different, but yet we are all the same. Let's keep Portland weird, wild, wonderful, and one. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air came proof through the night that our flag was still Let's do what's right for our city. Thank you all, I love you. I'm so honored to be a part of all of this. Thank you, Nair.